if there's one thing that if I could tell the world and know that they would listen, that I would tell them to do, it's to stop hiding. Last year I was at a UW event, it was a networking event. I was having a lot of fun talking to a couple people and this young woman approaches. Turns out she was a student. And she wasn't saying much, so after a while we sort of turned to her and I asked her, so who are you? What's your story? And she threw up her hands and said, oh me? No, I'm, I'm boring. No, I'm, I'm boring. I don't think it's because I'm a journalist, but deep down, I really believe that no one is boring. I believe that all of us are interesting and that all of us have interesting things to share beyond just our circle of friends and family that can have tremendous impact. And I think one of the most wonderful and enduring contributions of technology, particularly social technology, is to prove that. We are in an age of radical expression. I'm sure I don't even need to say it. You're hearing so much about Facebook and Twitter and all these things, you're probably sick of it. You probably start to feel like they've been around forever. They haven't. 10 years ago, we were freaking out about blogs. And think about how far we've come. It's insane, it's amazing. It's to the point where if somebody is not plugging in to that broader conversation somehow, you kind of wonder why. And that's a pretty incredible thing. Why share? Well, if you want to be part of making the future, and even better, if you want to be part of shaping the future in the image that you see it through your vision, through your ideas, if you want to have some power in doing that, then you had better know how to share. You'd better know how to express your ideas in really effective ways. Because it used to be that not being part of this conversation, well, that was normal. Why? Because being part of the conversation was really hard. Now it's so easy. Everything's different. Why share? Because it makes sense. In the 1830s, long before we had these technologies, my favorite philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson, said that the eye was placed where one ray should fall so that it might testify to that particular ray. I love that. To Emerson, self-expression is inherent in who we are. We have eyes so that we can say what we see. And isn't that a great way to look at the world? We're all standing in different places, from different perspectives, different lives, and if we share what we see, won't we understand each other better? Won't we be able to accomplish our goals better? We're living in a time where that's precisely what's happening and precisely what's possible. Why share? Because sharing works. There's a lot of names for your generation, my generation, the Facebook generation, we heard about the Google generation, the millennium generation, the entrepreneurial generation, generation me, generation sell, generation make. There's a lot of names. The common denominator is that ours is a generation that can do things on its own terms, each individual's own terms. Think about that for a second. We can do things on our own terms. Why? Because we can express, finally, what those terms are in incredibly powerful ways, in incredibly personal ways that are individual. So the cultural hero of our time is the entrepreneur. It's Steve Jobs. It's somebody who can defend their vision, not apologize for who they are, and then make things happen. First express the ideas, then build great relationships around them, which I think those two skills are just the most important going forward. And then execute. Now, it was a couple of years ago, I sat down to do a video interview with this guy. His name's Warren Etheridge. He's awesome, really, really smart, and um, it was about community. And I considered myself quite the expert on community, so we're sitting there talking. And he really challenged the way that I thought about one aspect of community. He asked me about the Facebook like button, which you're all probably familiar with for the most part. And at that point, it was kind of new, uh, this way of sharing. And so his question was, you know, Monica, there are all these great ways of sharing, but here comes this really easy way where somebody can be part of a movement or a cause just by clicking a button, and then maybe they never do anything again. What do you think of that? Do you think that's, that's okay? Is that good? Is that problematic? What I said at the time was, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's better than nothing, and it gathers people together, and maybe they'll take another step. I still think that's true, but I do think Warren has a point. I think something that's a little concerning is happening with our expression, and that is this. I think our expression is in danger of being reduced to numbers. Now that's not 
for any evil reason. There's no forces out there that are conspiring against us to do this to us. It's just human nature. Let me explain for a second. In the early days of social media, everything was very new. So it was disruptive. In the tech world, we love the word disrupt because it just knocked everybody off their feet, right? So there's all these new ways of sharing and all these systems that we had in place to understand, analyze, count, categorize the way that we think about our world, well, they didn't apply anymore because this is a brand new way of sharing. So back then, there was this incredible rawness and unleashed nature to the way individuals shared. You couldn't strategize it because you couldn't measure it. Well, now you can. Now it's been a few years. Now there's a lot of ways that marketers and brands and people can measure what they do on social media, can measure how they share. So is that bad? No. But what it's caused is nowadays as a response, there are easier ways to share than ever. So that expression becomes clicking a button in so many different ways. Is that bad? No. But is it the most powerful way that you can express who you are individually? And if you do too much of those light ways, are you making the most of this time? A couple examples. Frictionless sharing. The best example of this is Facebook. The term frictionless came from the like button. It's this idea that, well, sharing is awesome. You want to do it more. People like when you do it, so we're going to make it as easy as ever. So the Facebook like button's all over the web. The retweet button is really easy to use. I mean, there's examples all over. Um, and so yes, you are expressing yourself, sure. You're clicking like. You're saying you like something. But most of the time, your name and your identity and who you are don't necessarily accompany that like to wherever it goes. In fact, the major thing that happens with your like is you're a plus one. You're a plus one on an article. You're a plus one on a band's page. You're a plus one on a product. Again, is that bad? No. But if this is the majority of the way you engage and express yourself, are you really coming off as unique and powerful a person as you are? Frictionless sharing leads to something I call tally herds. Now, nobody likes to think that they're part of a herd. I think most of you are part of a tally herd, and probably several. What is a tally herd? A tally herd is any community or page or organization that gathers community through online sharing, but what they care the most about is how many people they've gathered, not who those people are. What they care most that the people they've gathered do is pass on their ideas, not engage with each other on new ones. The relationship that they care most about building is the relationship between that brand and you. Is it bad to be part of a tally herd? No. But if these are the only communities you are a part of, are you doing the most that you can with the ways you can engage? Everyone loves being viral. If you hear about a great YouTube video, you may not know it, but subconsciously, you'll open it up, and one of the first places your eye will go is to the view count. You want to know how many views that viral YouTube video has gotten, because apparently, virality equals value. Is that really true? Well, no. But it's certainly exciting, and a lot of marketers and People, I mean, they seek virality. And there's absolutely lots of really important and incredible things that get viral, that cause action and inspire change. But most of the time, those things started getting popular in a much smaller way. And then they picked up steam. These days, there's a lot of entities that want to skip all that and just go straight to the mass public and get as viral on as, to as many people as they possibly can. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But what you end up getting when you try to please that many people all at once is candy. The funny YouTube video, the picture of the cat. Is there anything wrong with these things? No. I love chocolate. I eat it every day. <laughs> it's great. Candy's awesome. But if I really want to express myself the fullest, how can people detect who I am by the funny quote that has been written on a picture that I'm passing on on Facebook? Is that really telling people who I am and what I can do and what I believe? This one's a doozy. Some of you may recognize the logo of a company called Clout, K-L-O-U-T. Clout is the godsend that all of those systems and people who were freaked out by social media because they couldn't measure it, this is their savior, one of many. What Clout does, what Clout is best known for, is it assigns a score 
for how you engage on social media, how many Twitter followers you have, Facebook likes, Instagram likes, Google Plus, Flickr, you name it. So here it is, finally, a way for us to measure how we share. Isn't that great? And it is for, again, marketers and brands. Um, and it helps them make a plan. It helps them move forward. It helps them grow. There's nothing wrong with that. Where I worry about that is um, when it comes to people. So if you're a person, I kind of think, well, you change your mind sometimes. You want to change your mind. And what I do is I check my cloud score every week at least. <laughs> and I feel a little dirty sometimes doing it, but I do it. And if I see a little tick down somewhere, a little part of my head goes, oh, you know, maybe I should tweet less about this thing that I was tweeting, or maybe I should tweet more about that. And then I have to stop myself and say, wait a minute. Do you want to be yourself, or do you want to be a strategy? So there's great ways to think of people being brands. There's useful ways to do that. But I think the downside that comes with that is that you risk losing your flexibility as a person and thinking that you have to be consistent, thinking that you owe it to your followers and the community you've built and the, the line that that chart is taking straight up. So I've given you examples of ways in which we have all these new, easier ways of sharing that are fun and they're tempting and they're seductive. Are, are they as meaningful? No. They're not bad. Are we losing our ability to express ourselves? No, definitely not. This is an incredible time. It's probably only going to get more accessible, more tools, you know, more voices, just louder. And that's great. But I do think it's like a muscle. And if you don't work out a muscle, it gets weak, and the ability becomes more difficult to recover. I think we're at a time where each of us can really try to be more aware of how it is that we're sharing, and whether it's the easy way that doesn't say a lot or the harder way that really does, that packs a punch, that makes the most of what you can do. So think about your voice when you think about this. Are you being somebody's copy machine most of the time? Are you passing things on? Or are you adding your value? Are you adding your ideas? Are you taking the time to write sometimes more than 140 characters, although you can say plenty in 140 characters? Think about relationships. I was saying that um, expressing yourself is, a, I think, one of the key skills of this time. And building relationships is the second. And you can do both almost at the same time. As you share, think about who you're sharing with online. Is it another fan of Doritos? Or is it someone that you can partner with and you can start to engage with and you can do really interesting, cool things with? Think about community. A healthy community, a really great community, cares about who you are and they want you to cultivate relationships with other members of that community. And even more, they will give you the keys to that community and let you set the direction. Now, these are pretty fantastic communities. One great example, this is Wael Gonim. Uh, he is the man who created the Facebook page that toppled the Egyptian dictator last year. Incredible, incredible community moderation. Each individual had a voice. And they could say one day something that totally contradicted what they said the week before, and that was okay. At the end of the day, the more we know you, the more you can share about yourself, honestly, the more we know about all of us, the more we understand our society. It just makes sense, and it's a win-win, because you're able to achieve more of your goals, and the world is able to be more progressive, more honest, a little less circus and theater. So stop hiding. You have voices. Use them. Thank you.